What's up guys, JV2017 here and I'm bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. Today we are continuing my character build series with the most requested character on my channel, Max Rokotansky, more commonly known as Mad Max. Obviously the new Mad Max movie came out just last year and now we have two different Maxes. So for this build, I went for more of the old school Mel Gibson Max because it made a lot more sense for Fallout and Tom Hardy's Max hasn't really done a whole lot in the first of the Mad Max reboot films. And now unfortunately we can't drive vehicles in Fallout 4 at the moment. You know, who knows? Maybe some DLC or PC mod in the future will add that functionality, but for the moment it's just not a reality in the game right now. So we have to deal with what we have, and this build is really designed around all the aspects of Max without all of the driving included. Now before we begin, I do want to point out that this is my interpretation of a Mad Max build. I'm sure there are plenty of other ideas out there, so if you'd like to share your version of this character, feel free to do so in the comments below. I try to strike a balance between being true to Max, but also trying to make this build fun, viable, and interesting to play in the game, so I hope you all will enjoy. The three traits that I use to shape my Mad Max character build are first that he is vengeful. Obviously his family has been killed and he's out for revenge and that's a big part of his character and his motivations throughout the films. And so he is a vengeful person and I kind of wanted to reflect that in this build. Obviously he's a survivor. He's out in this post-apocalyptic Australian wasteland in the movies at least. And I wanted to reflect that as well here and it fits perfectly because we are in a different sort of wasteland, obviously the Commonwealth, but he is a survivor. He's trying to make it out in this world that is not very friendly. In fact, it's very, very dangerous. That's also something I wanted to reflect. Finally, Max has a dog that he befriends, and it's perfect because we meet Dogmeat very early in the game and befriend Dogmeat, so it's pretty much the same kind of deal. And so I wanted to make sure that, you know, having the dog around, you know, taking attack dog, taking advantage of Lone Wanderer along with that, those are some core things with this build. The special stats for my Max are three strength, six perception, five endurance, four charisma, three intelligence, six agility, and then three luck for a total of 30 points. This includes the first perception bobblehead very early in the game, and then extra point in any other category that you want from the special book in the Soul Survivor's house. So the gist of what we're doing with our special points in relation to our perks is we're trying to get to those perks that make sense for Max. Of course, that makes total sense. And I did find with this build, it was a bit challenging and I struggled, you'll see in the gameplay, in order to kind of adopt the same kind of play style that I think that Mad Max would use. The reality is that he doesn't shoot a ton in the movies. There is some, you know, gun battles going on, but it's a lot of driving. He doesn't shoot a lot. And so I have not a lot to go off of in order to establish exactly what kind of combat we're going for, but I'll explain more of this as we get through the video. The four signature perks that we're gonna focus on for Max are Rifleman, Life Giver, Lone Wanderer, and Attack Dog. And right now we're gonna take a look at each of those perks one by one in the perk chart. First and arguably most important signature perk is gonna be Rifleman. And the reason we're taking this is because it affects shotguns, a little known fact that Rifleman affects both rifles and shotguns within Fallout 4. And so this makes sense for Max because within the movies, of course, he's using a shotgun that's kind of like his go-to. He doesn't usually shoot a lot of bullets, but of course, Fallout's a game where we have to kill people like I've explained. So Rifleman is what we're taking first. And with each rank, you're gonna get 20% more damage and then ignore part of the target's armor with rank two all the way up to rank three, a little bit more each time. And then with the final rank, you'll do double damage with your shotguns, ignore even more ammo and have a slight chance of crippling a limb. So Rifleman is a big part of our Mad Max build. Moving on. Life Giver. Life Giver is also a big part because I found this build to be a little bit tough to play. I think I've already touched on it a little bit here. It's a little bit tough to play because of, you know, what weapons we're going with and the focus we're going with with shotguns and then a pistol kind of sidearm deal, you know, but mostly mo focusing on shotguns. It's a little bit tough to play. And so in my opinion, Life Giver is a necessity with this build, at least, you know, because you're not going to find a ton of resources out there. But when you do, even still, combat is a little tough. So Life Giver gives us that damage mitigation. You get an instant plus 20 health with each rank, and then you regenerate health slowly with rank three, which is very helpful, especially on harder difficulties. Moving on, Lone Wanderer is perhaps the second most important signature perk here, because 
honestly, you're just, it's just you and your dog, and that's pretty much Mad Max. And so with Lone Wanderer, you're gonna take less damage with each rank, and then you're also gonna get more carry weight, and then finally, 25% more damage. And again, this works even if you have dog meat with you, and that's our plan with this build, of course, because Mad Max has a dog as well, or had a dog, however you view it. So Lone Wanderer is very important. Finally, attack dog. So obviously we're going to take attack dog because we're going to have dog meat with us at all times, you know, kind of role playing Mad Max. And so with each rank, you're going to get some extra bonus abilities for dog meat. He'll be able to hold enemies, give you a greater chance to hit them in vats and then cripple them and then finally cause them to bleed. And so these are really the core perks we're going after with our Mad Max build. Obviously, four perks is not enough for our build. We need some extra perks to kind of fill in that make sense for Max or, of course, just help out with this certain kind of build. So first off is armor, and this is something I recommend because some of the leather armor looks really cool and you need some, you know, higher ranks of armor modding in order to achieve that with Max. And also, you're going to need some damage mitigation. This is kind of tough to play. You'll see me struggling throughout the gameplay, really, to be super successful against tougher enemies. And so having that armor is gonna help you mitigate damage and I think it's a good idea. Moving way over to Medic. This is also a good idea to mitigate damage. You wanna make sure that every single stim pack or rat away really counts, especially when you're fighting enemies that have like radiation weapons, which is what I fought in this video. You'll see I get this huge amount of radiation. Having Medic and being able to take, you know, stim packs and rat away to remove the maximum amount of the damage or radiation is a great idea as well. Gun nut is also a good idea, although I will tell you that for shotguns and pistols, you don't really need a high rank of gun modding. This is just an afterthought kind of idea. If you wanna mix in another kind of weapon type, gun nut is gonna help you with that. Gunslinger is something I think you guys should also take. I wouldn't call it a signature weapon, but if you wanna roll around with a revolver, and Max does have a revolver in the Mel Gibson movies, then this is a great idea. With each rank, you'll have more damage and then some extra little incentives, increased range, you know, chance to disarm opponents, cripple limbs. It's just nice to have both Gunslinger and Rifleman with this because shotguns are not always reliable. You will have to pull out your sidearm occasionally. Action Boy, of course, is always a great idea for any you know, offensive base build. I recommend this for every single offensive base build. With each rank, you're gonna regenerate your action points faster. It's just a nice thing to have an agility. It only requires five agility, which is nice. And so we have five agility. We actually have six with this build. And so Action Boy makes sense there. Scrounger is another thing that I would definitely take, especially if you're gonna try to stay true to this build and get a Magnum. 44 rounds are not very easy to come by unless you have Scrounger in my experience. Also shotgun shells, it's always nice to have plenty of those since we're you know focusing on the shotgun. So Scrounger with each rank, you'll find more ammo in containers. And then finally, Bloody Mess. Again, something I recommend with all offensive base builds. You get more damage in combat and you get to see blood and guts fly. It's just a good idea to take Bloody Mess in any case, honestly. With all of those perks in mind, let's talk about the perk roadmap which is my term for the first perks that you'll take in the game for the first 10 levels. And these are just general guidelines. You don't have to follow them exactly, but I think this is a great starting point for Max. At level two, I would go ahead and take Lone Wanderer. You're gonna see the most kind of benefit from this perk very early in the game, in my opinion. And so I really like Lone Wanderer for Max. He's a survivor, like I've already mentioned. So I would take that first. Next, I would take Rifleman. There are not a ton of rifles slash shotguns early in the game, but you should come across one within the first five levels. I would go ahead and take that and establish that kind of play style very early. Next, I would take Life Giver. Get some extra damage mitigation going on there. You get some extra health early in the game. It's just helpful, especially on higher difficulties. At level five, I would go ahead and take Attack Dog. You're gonna meet dog meat very early in the game, regardless if you decide to do anything at Sanctuary with Preston and the Minutemen or not. You can find them at Red Rocket very early in the game. And so taking advantage of that early is a great idea. At level six, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and take Armor because you will be picking up plenty of stuff if you're playing that kind of character. I think it's a good idea with Max to pick up as much as you possibly can, bring it back, and then be able to craft some things, some extra armor, some extra damage resistance that'll definitely help you out here. Next, I would take Scrounger. Because we're gonna be using shotguns and shotgun shells, they seem abundant, but people don't use a lot of shotguns. And when you start using your shotgun a lot, you'll run out of them. So I think it's a good idea for that. And also for your sidearm, you know, pistol 44 ammo is not easy to come by if you're gonna use the revolver. So Scrounger is a great idea early as well. 
Next, I would just go ahead and take Action Boy. You're gonna start you know, running into larger groups of enemies. So having that AP regeneration is a great idea there. At level nine, you get Rifleman rank two. That's the first level you can get it at rank two. So I would go ahead and take that, boost your damage with rifles and shotguns. And then finally, I would take Attack Dog rank two at level 10. That's the first, actually it's level nine is the first available level you get that, but I would go ahead and take Rifleman at nine and then wait and get Attack Dog at 10. So if you couldn't tell already, the general play style that we're going for with Max is to use shotguns primarily and then use dog meat as well to survive the wasteland. It's kind of like we're simulating the movie as you know closely as we possibly can. And so you can command dog meat to go and attack enemies. And as long as you have attack dog, he'll have these extra you know advantages and you know abilities that he can use that will actually really help you out. He'll be able to hold an enemy and then you can run up and shoot him with a shotgun. It is difficult to play. I I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to jump in and just be able to be super successful with this build. I'm going to be completely honest. And also, you can use your revolver at a longer range. That's something I did throughout this gameplay. You'll see I get in several situations where a shotgun just doesn't work. They're too far away. And so I would pull out, you know, Max's sidearm, his revolver, and go ahead and use that. So I would say that's the general play style to shoot for if you're really trying to role play Max. My recommendations for signature weapons for Mad Max are going to be first the saw off double barrel shotgun and you can find a double barrel, barrel shotgun in the game however you have to take it to a you know weapons workbench and then make it sawed off that's going to reduce the range increase the recoil but increase the critical damage so it's kind of a really huge risk reward kind of thing to do but if you really want to stay true to max then you're going to do the sawed off I would also do that if you're trying to stay as close to max as possible. However, there are way far more practical options for shotguns out in the world. There's the terrible gun or the terrible shotgun. It's the French one. You can get that link in the description below if you need a weapon guide, I've already made one. Or there's Justice. Those are two unique shotguns. I would say the terrible gun is the better one out of those two. But essentially with the terrible gun, you get plus 25% damage and limb damage, but more recoil. It's also a combat shotgun, so it's got better range than the double barrel. Or you could get the Justice, which has a chance to stagger on hit. Additionally, if you do want to get a unique revolver to go with your shotgun, you could go for Kellogg's. That's easy to do. Just play the story. Or you could get something like Eddie's piece. Those would be two nice options for Max's revolver. Now let's talk about how to look like Mad Max or his signature appearance. You may be wondering, how am I able to have him look like I do in this video? First off, I'm wearing the Road Leathers armor, which is something you'll find very early in the game. Fortunately, you can look like Max very early on. And this is an underneath piece, so you can also layer on leather armor if you want some extra protection for your Mad Max, you can do that as well. And also I've read that apparently the road leathers are actually named after the Mad Max movies, or that could just be a mistake, I'm not sure about that. Also, I used some PC mods in order to make it feel like I was playing, you know, Max and also have his dog along with me. So the first one is the Mel Gibson, which is someone who literally just made Mel Gibson. The person's name is Vergesener on Nexus mods for the character. It's just a save game where they made the character to look like Mel Gibson, and I thought it was close enough. It looks really good. Honestly, Mel Gibson was a lot younger. This is kind of like an older looking Mel Gibson, but I still think it definitely works for Max. Also, I downloaded the classic dog meat mod by Seven Tiger. And so this actually changes the color of dog meat to make him look more like the dog that you, excuse me, I mean that Max encounters in the film franchise. And so links in the description below if you guys wanna check those out. Those are PC mods, you can't get them on console yet. We're not sure about mods on consoles yet but you can do this if you're on PC. Finally, for your companion, the choice is obvious. It's gonna be dog meat. It just makes sense for Max. He meets the dog in the movie. They become best friends, you know, pretty much the only person he can rely on. And that's kind of the relationship you wanna build in the game. And so with dog meat, you can still take Lone Wanderer. Obviously, that's a signature perk for our Max build. And so that's a huge part of this. You can still take advantage of that perk and also take Attack Dog, which is great for dog meat, gives him some additional abilities. And of course, dog meat does not judge you, which is great as well. And honestly, for kind of a morality standpoint, I would just be morally neutral. I would go either one way or another, just based on your own personal feelings, because Max doesn't seem to be a truly morally good person or a truly morally evil person. I would just go down the middle of the road. So I'd like to know after watching this video, are you going to play my Mad Max build? I will admit, like I've said before, it is difficult. It's hard to play this build. It's hard to play with a shotgun, especially a double barrel shotgun in this game. You're gonna encounter enemies at longer ranges, so it's 
really is necessary to have a sidearm with you in order to be effective, especially, especially on higher difficulties. Also, I'd like to know how would you build Max? Would you go in a complete different direction? I could totally see people trying to make a more viable build for Fallout, you know, one that's a little bit easier to play. Let me know how you would do that and also suggest a new character for me to focus on for next week's character build video. Share all of that in the comments section below. All right, guys, today I showed you how to make a Mad Max Road Warrior character build in Fallout 4. And next time we will cover Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for more Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for more unique weapon guides, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.